Most students entering this course will have experience with high school mathematics and first year calculus, and maybe a smattering of other experiences such as statistics. Linear algebra is not only a new topic in mathematics, but compared to these previous experiences, it involves a substantially new way of thinking. In this short introductory video, I want to briefly lay out the main themes and ideas that I'll keep working through during the course. I encourage you to keep these ideas in the back of your head and notice how the material of the course builds up to these ideas. First theme, geometry and algebra. Much of modern mathematics is based on the Cartesian coordinate system. The major strength of this system is that it, is that it builds a connection between geometry and algebra. Shapes are connected to their equations so that you can determine the properties of shapes by working with those equations. And likewise, equations can be interpreted as shapes so that you can use geometry to visualize what is happening in algebra. In calculus, this happened through graphs. A graph was a geometric vis visualization of the behavior of a function. Linear algebra continues to build on this connection, though the specific types of geometry and equations are different from calculus. All of the equations and algebraic manipulation in the course can be visualized geometrically, and likewise, all the geometry in the course can be accessed algebraically. Though it is called an algebra course, this is as much a geometry course as anything. And the second theme is flatness. If linear algebra is a geometry course, what kind of geometry does it do? It does flat geometry, straight lines, planes, flat surfaces, and higher dimensional analogs. Flat objects are inherently more accessible and understandable than more complicated curved objects, so they are a natural start to geometry. Much of more complicated geometry is built on the linear algebra foundation of flat geometry. It's a natural place to start. The third theme is linearity. In geometry, the word linearity refers to lines, which fits the previous point about flat, flat objects. However, the word has another important meaning in algebra. An operation or structure is linear if it interacts well with addition, subtraction, and multiplication by constants. That's a bit vague for now, but I'll be developing this idea in detail over the course. From the algebraic side, this course is about understanding how these linear operations behave and what they can and cannot do. And of course, the geometric linear and the algebraic linear do match up with each other. The fourth theme is symmetry. In ordinary usage, a symmetry is a change of a shape that preserves it, like a reflection. The mathematical notion is similar, but not precisely the same. If I have a transformation, such as a reflection, its symmetries are the things it preserves. I've just flipped the definition here. In conventional usage, the shape has a symmetry, but in mathematical usage, the transformation, the reflection has the symmetry. Mathematically, whenever I define some kind of transformation, I want to ask for its symmetries, for what it preserves. It can preserve shapes, and I will talk about this in detail, but it can also preserve other mathematical structures, particularly algebraic structures. To study symmetry is to ask, for a mathematical operation, what is preserved? Asking this question can build a deep understanding of the transformation. I'll keep coming back to this question of what is preserved throughout the course. The fifth theme is definition, rigor, and proof. Mathematics is a formal language with strict rules about logic, definition, and arguments. Your mathematical education to date has included this formalization, but this course represents a substantial step up in commitment to that formalization. All the definitions in this course will be given in mathematically formal language. I will try to provide proofs for many of the statements. I'll also ask you to try and write proofs in your exercises and assignments. I'll try to convince you that writing proofs alongside doing calculations or solving problems is doing mathematics. And finally, I want to talk about mathematical thinking and writing. The themes listed above are the content goals I have for this course. However, in addition to the content of linear algebra itself, 
I want to focus on the more general skills of mathematical thinking and writing. As I just said, I'm going to present material more formally and expect a, expect a higher standard of formal writing from you. A large part of learning mathematics is being apprenticed into the way that mathematics is written and, even most, more so, the way that mathematics is thought. This is a much trickier task than just learning how to do problems. It's learning a style, not an algorithm. It's learning a way of thinking, not just an individual fact. As challenging as it is, working on thinking and writing is a major goal of this course. And I hope you buy into this challenge, that you consciously work on your mathematical thinking and writing. Of the undergraduate mathematics courses, linear algebra is the most natural place to start talking about mathematical proofs and to work on formalized mathematical writing. The material lends itself to a number of accessible proof examples and has a level of abstraction that suits proof questions. The linear algebra course also serves as a prerequisite for most of the other mathematics courses where proof becomes quite important, including, including the senior calculus courses, discrete mathematics, abstract algebra, cryptography, and theory of computing.